Hey everybody, Sloppy Joe here, or Sloppy Joe in Seattle, or the GTV6 guy. Um, I've decided my channel, I'm going to kind of focus more for the, at least the short term, in the short term being who knows how long, on the uh, the restoration of the driveline of my Alfa Romeo, Alfa Romeo GTV6, which is halfway under a cover, the hood or bonnet is up on the roof, and uh, the engine bay is, of course, empty being that the engine is right over there in my little engine rebuild section of the garage. Um, so I have been uh, tearing apart, actually I've already torn apart everything. Um, started off with the clutch in the transaxle, which is of course at the back of the car. Um, clutch was going pretty much gone, so I decided, okay, this winter I was gonna take it out and replace it. Um, once I got under there, got the the whole rear end uh, dropped, um, which actually I should just go over here and show you so you, know, you can see. So you can see under here, I've got the whole, the, the Dion tube is, I've just got, it's on a dolly, but it's just, uh, I've just got it stored under there so it's out of the way. But uh, anyway, once I dropped that out of the way, got the transaxle out and said, okay, well, I need to uh, <clears throat> replace the clutch. Um, started looking around a little bit, saw that the driveline donuts or the guibos, they were looking a little dicey. So I said, okay, I should probably drop the driveline, replace the guibos. Um, they're looking a little, little sad, probably should just do it. Hey, why not? Cars in the air for the winter. Um, do it while it's easy to access. So dropped the exhaust out, got the driveline out. And, uh, you know, um, I had a very small oil leak at the back of the engine, <clears throat> which I suspected was the rear main seal. So I said, okay, I know I got to get to that at some point. And I noticed that it had gone from minor to a little bit more pronounced, a little bit heavier um, oil escape, we'll say, um, a little bit more bleeding. So I said, all right. Uh, well, let me see if I can get to it easily without having to remove too much. And I said, I just said, no, I'm gonna have to pull the engine. So the engine came out. Uh, that's where I borrowed uh, engine hoist from my dad when we did his uh, Ferrari 308 engine rebuild. We used that to pull the engine out of the, the back of the 308. <clears throat> so we drug it up to my garage and hoisted out my engine. And I proceeded to tear it apart. The transaxle, just to save some space and time, I sent that off to a local alpha uh, specialist. So they're going through it, replacing the clutch, cleaning it up, new seals, blah, blah, blah. Um, the rear end uh, is going to get new, uh, brand new brakes. I've got new brake rotors and uh, brake calipers. I believe they're in one of the boxes that I have stored up there. I'm not going to dig them down. Uh, bunch of the parts of the car, things I'm going to keep and reuse are stored away, um, engine mounts, things like that, of course, I'll replace all of those. Um, so, um, where are we at now? We've got parts boxed and stored away. Uh, I've got my, my tires and wheels stored there. If you come over here, um, there's a few miscellaneous things. Uh, up here is my, uh, this is my radiator I had, uh, completely rebuilt. So I've got a you know, basically a like new rebuilt radiator. Um, if you were ever curious of a, what a three liter Alfa Romeo Busso V6 looks like, bear, here you go. Um, and as you can see, if I get the angle right, there we go. Uh, it's pretty clean on the inside. I have not cleaned any of these, the walls on the inside. Um, the This is exactly how it looked when I pulled the oil pan, as with the heads. The uh, inside of the heads uh, where the, the valve springs and the cams and all that, um, they were shockingly clean. And I dropped those off uh, with uh, Steve Hannaford down at Progressive Automotive in Tacoma, Washington area. And he looked at him and said, have you already rebuilt these heads? And no. And he said, well, he goes, take a look at your engine. He goes, you probably have a real low mile three liter. So looking at the cylinder bores, uh, the honing is all there. The pistons, um, if you can see right here, you can see the piston, the domes. I've just done a little bit of minor cleaning, um, but nothing major. Um, the carbon the carbon buildup was very minor. Uh, and a lot of it just kind of, uh, it wiped away with a little bit of um, just 
WD-40 and degreaser just wiped it off. So uh, really, the engine probably is a fairly low mile engine. But regardless, uh, it's going to get, um, you know, it'll get all new seals and gaskets and all the above. So it's good. Basically the block, the, the lower end or the short block, if you grew up working on uh, small block Chevys, the short block will basically get a refresh. The heads will get completely redone. They're getting a, uh, they're getting a mild port. They're getting a cam bump. Uh, they're getting new, uh, new handmade guides. Um, and they are getting uh, modified uh, Porsche 911 seals. So, uh, along with improving upon what's there, the goal is, of course, just you know, a small horsepower bump, make it a little bit more sporty. It's a street car. I don't track this car. I don't need a race car. I don't need something that's so radical um, that it barely runs on the street and let, until you get on the uh, on the track and it's you know needs to be at a 5,000 RPM or above. It's not what we're going for. It's a street car. Um, so just a mild performance bump and uh, and basically in an engine that will be refreshed, rebuilt, et cetera, et cetera. Um, on the parts front, I'm going a little overboard with this um, as far as the engine's concerned. My goal when it's all said and done is to basically have the prettiest GTV6 engine in the world. That's what I'm going for. That's my, I, I went from, I'm just going to clean up all my parts to, I'm powder coating, I am beautifying, I want my engine to be a piece of jewelry. Um, and that's what we did. So I've got some stuff back from the powder coater, I've got more that needs to go in, but I've got some stuff back. I should show a little bit of what we got. Here's the plenum. And you can't really see it too well because it does have a little bit of a metallic fleck in the, uh, the silver color, but in the sunlight, it looks real good. So when you lift the hood on a sunny day, uh, this is going to shine real bright on top. So this is powder coated. Um, and I'm going to start actually reassembling all the, the bits and pieces onto this. So that's all, that'll be ready to go back in. Uh, what else do we got? I got stuff everywhere. I'm sorry, guys. Um, here's my, here's the bell that would go on the back of the block. And my inspiration for this was actually a Ducati race engine. And Ducati likes to use that kind of gold, um, that gold magnesium color. Uh, along with the bare aluminum and, and bits of red and things like that. So that's what I wanted to go for. Now, my valve covers or my uh, cam covers were already powder coated red previously. So those are already done. So those are nice bright red. Um, what else did we do? We did, of course, the upper and lower, upper and lower oil pan. Here's the lower oil pan here. Um, sorry, I'm trying to adjust the camera. So here's the lo lower oil pan. Get that out of the way. And then here's the upper pan. And of course they cleaned up the inside so it's all like new. There's the outside. The baffles are all nice and clean. I mean, so it's basically a brand new, basically a brand new oil pan. Uh, not slimy or gross or nasty. It's, it's, so it's all, all the stuff's nice to handle. And then of course we did, this is the front engine cover. Uh, so this, would be situated like that, and the oil pan would mount to that surface right there, which is now nice and clean. You know, the inside, of course, is all. This is the old front engine seal. That'll come out, and the new one will go in its place. Um, so that's done. And the intake tubes, these all got done in that same magnesium. So these kind of uh, magnesium gold will be sitting underneath that aluminum plenum, which I think is going to look really nice. So if you were going to imagine this, um, you know, it'd be, you know, orientated in such a way that you'd barely see, you know, and I know, I know you barely see these underneath the plenum, um, but the plan is to clean up a lot of the wiring and the hoses. So um, it's very minimalistic as far as the rubber and the wires under there. So these kind of things are uh, a little bit more prominent. Um, see well, of course what else we got here there's the there's the valve covers that were already previously done um so i think that's it yeah i think so i think that is it for now um i'm sure there's some other bits here somewhere but anyway that's the that's the heft of it right now uh so and then of course you know under the hood clean up all the grease and the grime you know who knows if ever that was done 
Um, then we'll do a stainless steel, uh, stainless steel header, stainless steel exhaust. Um, and then what else, what else, what else? I'm trying to think. <sighs> That's kind of where we're at at the moment. I just got a package today from England and I can't even remember, honestly. I can't even remember what I ordered. Um, I've kind of been on an ordering spree when it comes to the bits and pieces. I think this is gaskets and stuff. Okay, I, see a, well, I see a water pump. Uh, okay, yeah, so I got a new thermostat. And yes. New water pump. And thermostat, of course. And what else we got here? Yeah, this should be... What is all this? What have we got here? Ah, my spring perches. So I have some, these are gonna be uh, some spring perches for my lowering springs that I have. The uh, the ones that were in there, the aluminum was pretty thick. So I wanna get the back of the car down about a half inch. Um, so I'm gonna eliminate those aluminum blocks and put these in place. So that should drop the back of the car right where I want it. What else we got? What is this? Ah. Okay, so I've got my bypass hoses that would mount up on the uh, thermostat housing and then a, I think that's my oil pressure. Yeah, my oil pressure regulator. And then there is a, let's see. Oh, I feel them in there. It's a, <clears throat> a front main seal and a rear main seal. And then, oh, okay. And these are my, uh, my safeguards just in case, <laughs> just in case I get lost in, uh, because honestly, the the heads are going to be gone for anywhere from four to six months. Um, that's just, that's the backlog. The backlog is actually years, but because my heads were in such good shape, they're not going to be that drastic. But regardless, I don't have heads to put back on that block for four to six months. So in that time, I am counting on myself forgetting exactly how things came apart or went together. So as a safeguard, I got myself a couple manuals. Just to have as insurance for myself. And we're going to set those right up there. And what else we got here? Okay. And then, well, oh, there's something else. What is that? Oh, yes. I forgot about these. I forgot I ordered these. Uh, new turn signal lenses for the front. Because mine, both of mine, have taken rocks in the last couple of years. So they're cracked. So that's cool. I forgot I even ordered those. Um, and then... I think lastly is just, yeah, my, ah, yes, my engine gasket set. So every gasket and seal that needs to go back into that engine is here. And I think the only ones I can't use are going to be uh, the, those um, copper exhaust gaskets because I believe the stainless steel headers use a different one. Um, I'll have to verify that. But I've got every every gasket and seal that I could possibly need to start reassembling, um, you know, some of these upper and lower upper lower lower oil pans, things like that. The only other thing I need to get is um, some pretty bolts because the one thing um, I don't want to do, and I see this on some of these um, like Wheeler dealers. I love Wheeler dealers. Who doesn't love Wheeler dealers? Great show, especially with Ed China in the old days. Um, but things that drove me crazy was they would, they would rebuild these engines and do all this work and make things pretty. And then they'd put some rusty ass, nasty screws and bolts and nuts back on the car. And I was like, go spend 10 bucks on some nuts and bolts. And it, it just, it would go from a 99.9% .9 job to a hundred percent. So I need to, um, I got to hit up some places either online or some local, um, nut and bolt shops that have all the metric stuff, but I want either chrome or stainless steel, um, Something that's going to look pretty, especially with all the powder coating and stuff like that. It's not worth it to put the old, grimy, nasty bolts and nuts back on. You know, you got to go that extra step, especially if you're if you're sinking all this time and energy and money into into beautifying. Um, you know, go that extra step, get the nuts and bolts, get, take care of that. I think a lot of guys overlook that stuff. Uh, and I think, yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. Okay. That's all the damage I did on this, this tram rim. But I've got some other things I'm planning on with the car. I'm planning on probably changing the, the front fascia color from black. I'm thinking about doing it in uh, red to match the body, um, as, well as, the, as well as the rear. Um, these these uh, flat, or I don't, I don't know what they're called. Anyway, 
these right here, these plastic guards that go over the uh, on the rear quarter by the bumper. Think about doing those in a uh, matching color red to the paint. Um, thinking about playing with the bumpers, uh, maybe lightening them, changing the color. I don't know yet. I'm playing with ideas. Um, I've got months and months to play with ideas, so not really in a hurry. Uh, but what I can say for any of you guys, and I know this video is going on a little bit, and I apologize for that, but I haven't checked in and talked about the car in a while. I've just been driving it and enjoying it. I mean, uh, I don't even know if I've, last time I followed, I mean, I, I know maybe you saw where I put on the, you know, Ferrari Fiat style mirrors, um, just to make it a little bit more sporty. You know, the interior is the interior, and there's no good lighting in here, but I've got uh, Coco mats makes really nice floor mats and I got the uh, red and black checker uh, and they look awesome in the car. They really do. So if you have, um, you know, and they make them different colors. So if you have a, a blue car, a gray car, whatever, you can get them different colors. They look fabulous um, in the car. I would check them out um, if you want some nice floor mats. I'm not saying this because they sponsor or any of that horse shit. I had to buy them. They're expensive. They are. They're 250 bucks, I think. Um, but they, uh, if you call, if you call them, uh, and I've done a lot of, <laughs> I've done a lot of the homework for you guys. So, uh, they did not have a GTV six, um, uh, um, measurements or cutout for the floorboards for a GTV six. They did not have them. So I had to do all the measuring and make templates and send them to them before they would make my mats. So if you call them, uh, let them know that if you want GTV6 mats, tell them that, uh, you know, Joe in Seattle um, uh, for GTV6, they should have them on file. So I've saved you guys a couple weeks because they had to mail me all the templates and things. I had to measure and cut. They had to mail them back to them. So um, I've done the legwork for you. So if you want some really nice mats, really nice mats that will likely outlive the car because they are really high quality. I will say it. Worth the money. Um Give them a call, get some, and I've already done you guys some, I've, I've done any solid, so you don't have to do any of the, the, the homework on it. Just tell them you want GTV6, they have them on file now, and that'll save you a couple weeks. They'll just, you know, they, they make them uh, per order, so they do take a week or two to get, um, but they're gorgeous. So I would highly recommend them. Um, beyond that, uh, that's about it. You know, I would say I'm not a, uh, I'm not a mechanic by trade, by any means. Um, but this is what I could tell you about this whole process of pulling the engine out here. It wasn't that bad. Um, the biggest thing, get the car up in the air as high as you can, uh, because rolling around on the ground sucks. Uh, that is why I've got some carpet on the concrete. Um, cause there, I, I, I have the car on jack stands as high as I comfortably am, am willing to put it. Um, I don't want to get too rocky and tippy and all that kind of stuff. Um, but even so, some areas with a creeper, I can't get to. So I've got to be on my back. So that's, I got some carpet. Um, you know, this house is new. Uh, the house is a year old now. But they're still building homes in our area. And I just go around and I ask the carpet people, hey, when you're done installing carpet in here, any extra, leave it rolled up. I'll happily come by with my truck, pick it up, and I roll it out in here. So when this is all... When the project's over, I fully expect to just toss this carpet because it'll be nasty and scuzzy. And then I'll replace it either with a um, epoxy floor or coat the floor with something and make it pretty again. But for the, for the sake of comfort, the carpet's in here. Um, and, you know, it, it's just it's getting nasty and grimy, but that's what it's there for. It's basically one-time use. Um, but uh, – and then I know a couple of people have asked me about my, uh, about my, uh, my coveralls. I didn't buy them this way. Um, this is actually something my wife did for me, which was actually very cool. So these are just a set of the red cap. Just a set of red cap coveralls you can get on my Am Amazon. I think they're like 50 bucks or so. And then she just got a, um, this is an iron-on iron -on patch. She just got this online and then ironed it on for me and made this for me. Um, because she knew I was hunting for a set of like Alfa Romeo, like vintage coveralls. But the only ones you could find are like 200 bucks, and I don't want to spend $200 on something I'm going to thrash. I mean, um, you know, I, I've probably been in these for a total of, uh, you know, 24, 30 hours out here working, and I haven't washed them, but, 
you know, they're not, they're not awful. I mean, you could run through the wash or some OxyClean. I'm sure it helps, but you know, after a project like this, um, yeah, I fully expect them to be thrashed and hopefully not because I really like them. The other by the other uh, byproduct of those, especially in the wintertime, like it is now, is if you're wearing your jeans, you know, just a, like a you know thin sweater or something like that, and you have those on um, as well, keeps you pretty warm. So there's been a couple nights where I've actually had to open the garage door and work because I was too warm. And those are on days where it's in the, you know, the thirties, the high thirties. So, um, kind of a nice feature is that they help keep you just a little bit warmer. So it makes working out in the garage a little bit more comfortable because if you're like me, if it's a hundred degrees outside, I don't want to work in the garage. It's too hot. If it's 25 degrees outside, it's too cold. I don't want to work in the garage. So if I can keep myself somewhat insulated and warm and, uh, not be thrashing like nice sweaters or, you know, uh, hoodies and things like that. Cause before those go through a lot of hoodies and jeans and, you know, you come out here and you go, Oh, I'll just go out to the garage for a half hour. And you're just wearing what you're wearing. And then before you know it, you're like, Oh shit, I've thrashed a, my jeans that I wore to work today. And I, you know, thrashed my, uh, my, you know, sweater, my golf sweater polo or something. And it's like, Oh, well, okay. I just ruined 50, 60, 70, a hundred dollars worth of clothes because I wanted to go out to the garage for 10 minutes. And uh, so get a set of coveralls, do that. Um, so beyond that, uh, the process, not that bad, dirty, slow, uh, take your time, mark everything in bags. Um, I, I, let me see if I actually have any samples. Yeah, I mean like, you know, so it's like here's a, the guibo bolts that would meet from the front guibo to the back of the engine, you know, so it's just mark all those things so you can keep them separate and put them back in the right spot. I know I've read a lot of things with the guibos, especially people freak out and like, oh, every bolt and nut and washer has to go back in the same spot because of balance. That's a lot of crap. Uh, I'm sorry. It just has to be. Now, I'm not saying you can put a bolt that weighs, you know, 50 grams on one side and one that weighs 20 grams on the other. But if they're close enough, they're close enough. Because the guibos on this car, there were some nasty chunks missing out of the guibo itself. Big chunks of rubber, gone. I, I've been driving this car for several years. The last time I was under there and really looked, I've never had vibration issues. I've never had any kind of uh, drivability issues, nothing like that. Um, so is it is it really a balance issue? I think yes in extreme circumstances. And I think it's been overblown over the years, uh, I think it started off as, you know, yeah, these things need to be pretty close in, in weight. And over the course of 35 or 40 years, it's turned into, if there's any fractional margin of 0.001% of difference, the car will just shake itself to pieces. And I think, I don't think we need to worry about that. I've weighed, <laughs> I've weighed the nuts, bolts, washers as they've come off and compared them. They're all within a few grams of one another. Um, so does it really matter? Probably not. Uh, if you want to be real anal about it, you could add nuts or washers so everything exactly weighs the same when it goes back on. Or you can mark every nut, bolt, and washer and put it exactly in the same. But why does that matter anyway? Because you're replacing guibos, which are completely different than the ones that were on before, especially if there's chunks missing out of them. So... No matter what you do, you're not necessarily replacing like for like. Something is going to vary. There's going to be a little difference. So I wouldn't be that worried about it. Um, engine itself, do not be afraid of these. This is this is just a, a, an overly complicated air pump. If you understand internal combustion engines as little as I do, it's basically just designed to suck air in and push air out again. And in the middle, there's uh, some processes which turn, you know, gasoline and air into explosions. Um, it's not a Swiss watch. It's not a Rolex. It's not a, you know, it's not a, it's a, it's not a, a Hoyer or a classic chronograph or anything like that. It's a pretty simple machine. Um, I tore this down in a couple hours. I, it's not that difficult. It's messy as all hell, so be prepared for a mess. Um, especially with all the coolant that pours out once you've uh, popped the heads loose and things like that. But after that, it's pretty straightforward. It's just nuts, bolts, covers, gaskets, blah, 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 blah. Put it back together in reverse order. And uh, when it's all said and done, just make sure, you know, uh, the old measure twice, cut once. Put things back together. Make sure you're top dead center and you're all your little marks and your timing marks and your cams. Just make 
every sort of, uh, make sure everything is lined up, bolt it all back together. Um, you know, test it on a stand. You can turn it by hand. Make sure everything works. Nothing interferes. Make sure the um, the uh, lifters don't or not the lifters. Um, uh, make sure your valves don't smack your pistons, things like that. Do it all by hand and then adjust accordingly. Put it back in the engine or put the engine back in the car. Wire it up and do it again. Just keep making sure as you go every step of the way. And then at some point, you just bite the bullet and you fire it up. Uh, hopefully it fires up. So that is it. That's what we're at right now. I know I haven't checked in and talked about this project. I know um, I'm on Inst Instagram a lot. Uh, Alfa Romeo... GTV6 Quattrofolio uh, on Instagram. I put a lot of photos as I go um, and people seem to be interested in that. So if you're curious, check out pictures on Instagram. Um, and other than that, I'm going to try to keep doing little videos as I go because I know there's a lot of guys who have these cars and it might not be a GTV6. It could be an Alfetta. It could be an Alfetta uh, sedan. Um, it could be a Milano. But... Um, you know, there's a lot of these cars that I think now are starting to gain popularity. Um, not necessarily oodles and oodles of value, but they're getting more popular, a little bit more harder to obtain, and a little bit more money. Um, and they're worth saving. They're worth fixing up. They're worth putting the time and the effort into um, if you can get it. So uh, I, I plan on having this car as long as I can. So it's worth it to me to put the extra money and the extra time into it. Um, and make it pretty because I don't want it to be, I don't want it to be something that's, uh, you know, halfway there where, you know, you're rolling down the road and it looks gorgeous, but underneath it all, it's held together with uh, duct tape and hopes and dreams. Um, we don't want that. So, you know, give the cars the love they need. And I'm just hoping that something like this, especially, like I said, I'm not a professional mechanic in any way. I don't work in the automotive industry at all. I do this as a hobby. Um, but I can also say, don't be afraid of it. Uh, acquire the proper tools, um, ask questions if you need it, and then just go at it. You know, document things, um, you know, take pictures, write things down, take notes, mark things. It's all pretty, it's all pretty easy. Nothing, nothing worth being afraid of. And always remember this, if you screw it up really bad, there's always something or someone that can help you fix it, or you can always pay to have it fixed and undo your oops. Um, it costs a little bit of money, but it's not the end of the world. You don't break something that can't be replaced. You just go, Hey, I kind of screwed this up. Can you fix it for me? Yeah. Okay. You're out about hundred bucks, 200 bucks, whatever. Um, but it's not, it's not something that's going to be relegated to the scrap heap of history. So that's where we're at. Uh, sorry for the video. I wanted to kind of go through everything I've been involved with, uh, here at home. Uh, getting the uh, getting the GTD6 uh, fi fixed up and restored as far as all the mechanics go. Um, so like I said, it's getting you know new brakes front and rear. Um, it's getting new rotors. Uh, you know, obviously an engine rebuild, um, transaxle rebuild, a Dion rebuild. It's getting a driveline rebuild. Um, and uh, so. One thing I will say, be cautious. If you go looking for little problems, you will probably find a lot a lot of other ones along the way that um, this will snowball in a hurry. So be prepared that I was prepared for a $500 clutch job. And this is probably going to cost me upwards of five grand when I'm all said and done. Um, is what it is. But when it's all said and done, I probably don't have to address any of these things for the next decade at least. I could just drive it, enjoy it, have fun with it, maintain it along the way. So anyway, I've rambled long enough. If you have any comments or questions, um, post them. Um, if there's anything you want to know about this process, anything you're curious about, uh, shoot me a message. Um, like I said, Instagram, you can get me on there. You can inst I'm, That's easy to get a hold of me. Like I said, it's uh, uh, I think it's um, 81, 81 Alfa Romeo GTV6 Quattrofolio or Alfa Romeo GTV6 Quattrofolio, whatever. I can't remember. You'll find me. It's, it's, it's this car. It's easy to spot. Um, so that's it. If you have any comments, questions, shoot them over to me. I'm always happy to help. Uh, signing off. Talk to you later.